Hello and welcome. Today I'll be going over some information I came across. This morning I was going through YouTube and the YouTube algorithm gods somehow uh, pushed upon me a video by Grim XV. So shout out to Grim. I'm going to put uh, their link in the description uh, to both their video and their channel. They did a video on the recent interview uh, questions that were presented to Jeremy Beerson during the Via Arena EU Battle Rising tournament, which took place last Sunday. Now, those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, or um, just in general watching my videos, have probably figured out I'm a, not really a PvP person. Uh, I, I don't play on PvP servers or anything like that, so... Uh, I wasn't really watching that information or watching that tournament closely, but because Grimm covered it, I soon discovered, hold on a second, Jeremy Beerson was there and they had a bunch of questions uh, asked of them while they were present for the tournament. And I went over to the V Arena Discord and I'm already part of the Discord, so I saw the Q&A and I was like, holy crap, that's awesome. I was looking at the... Uh, questions and when I read the title something stuck out to me some some of the questions of the Q&A so I was like okay cool and then I watched Grimm's video I thought it was great by the way good job and uh, when I took a when I uh, took a moment to listen to the video I realized they only covered the questions on the list so I said okay if these are some of the questions from the Q&A maybe I should go and take a look at the actual video you know if it's still up to see if I can you know get information from the VOD so that's what I did and I went over to the Twitch channel the V Arena Twitch channel and I saw that the EU tournament uh, was still posted there. Luckily, I didn't catch it too late. So I sat down through the whole about it was about like, what, two hour stream, I want to say. And I was listening through it and I was taking notes and writing stuff down because there were things that indeed were not listed here on the answers, which is fine. I mean, I get it. You know, V Arena is more of a PvP focused uh, discord, so it makes sense. Um, so I took the time to listen to it so you guys don't have to. So uh, yeah, let's get started on some of the stuff that I came across. So I'm just going to be talking about this stuff kind of casually. I'm not going to be saying things exactly the way Jeremy responded or exactly the way that the interviewers uh, asked the questions, but I'm just going to get to the point on some of these things and mention some of the questions that uh, were answered that were not written in that post. So yeah, let's get started. The first question or one of the questions they asked was, are you going to introduce horse breeding? And Jeremy straight up said no. So that was kind of sad. I was a little sad about that. Uh, they're not introducing horse breeding. So that was a definitive no. I, I was like, okay, well, all right. Um, the next question was, can you tell us a bit more about what you're looking at? Uh, what you're thinking, what's coming next in regards to balance around blood types, spells, jewels, and stuff like that. Um, they basically said that they've been collecting a list of the most egregious issues and those will be immediately looked at and uh, there'll be extensive testing on this that will be conducted during the beta for 1.0. Um, they're hoping this beta test is going to be a little bit more prepared than the one for Gloomrot and also hoping that the balance testing will go more smoothly this time around. So uh, I actually participated in the in the beta testing during uh, like uh, for Gloomrot. Um, we couldn't really say anything about what we saw in there because there was an NDA, so I couldn't really uh, make any content about that or talk about it. But um, I, I find it really interesting that he he mentioned preparedness when it came to the beta. So. Um, it sounds to me like they have a lot more um, of a solid foundation for uh, bug fixing going forward. I assume it's probably related to the client, which you'll uh, hear more about going forward into this interview. So uh, yeah, that was interesting. The next question they asked was, do you have any specific examples of specific spells or anything that you're looking into specifically? And uh, he particularly mentioned Aegis being a problem and they also know that there's an issue with some blood types being more dominant than others. They're going to try and adjust a little bit going into testing but also there's going to be so many new elements that are going to be introduced into the game that it's going to shake up everything in a big way as far as how things work. So what it sounds like to me based on his response uh, 
it sounds like they know what some issues are specifically and they're just going to prioritize based on how game breaking a bug is or how you know uh problematic something is um so i, I thought that was really interesting it's not an unexpected answer but it's definitely good to hear all right so the next question that was asked was is there a tier that is missing within spells versus physical tiers and legendaries and will there be legendary amulets the answer that jeremy gave was something along the lines of the shards are going to be legendary amulets with interesting stats to match the ones they've seen had a unique stat on it which doesn't exist on any other piece yet um they're not sure if it's going to stay that way and when pressed further he didn't elaborate further he's hush hush as one might say the next question was about armor sets and they were asking if the armor sets are going to have unique stats um jeremy's response to this was yes based on playstyle. so there's going to be a scholar set brute set warrior and rogue set and the sets might have set bonuses too, but he's not sure. So when, when he mentioned the set bonuses, that was something I actually didn't even think about. And I was like, oh my God, like <laughs> that's actually a good point. Cause if you're having uh, armor sets based on play style and the armor sets are like different pieces, like, you know, gauntlets, pants, you know, shirt and all that, it would make sense you can mix and match them, right? So for him to mention the possibility of set bonuses, I thought was really interesting. The next question was about uh, blood types, you know, whether there's going to be new blood types or new spells. And Jeremy's response to this was yes, but there's not going to be a new school of magic. So from what it sounds like, uh, based on his response, the current trees or, or schools of magic are pretty much set in stone and they're not really going anywhere. They're not adding any more types of magic or subtracting or anything like that, at least from what he said here. Um, so I thought that was really good uh, to keep in mind or something that was kind of noteworthy. Uh, the next question they asked about were about stairs being destroyable. They said, are stairs going to be destroyable? Are you going to do anything for stairs being used for raid defense? Now, I'm going to be honest, guys, this isn't something that I even thought about because I don't play PvP, but apparently there's been an issue where people would just use stairs to like protect their castle, which honestly is fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine you're getting, you know, uh, raided and the stairs are just blocking the way. And the thing is, golems can't, I don't think golems can break those either. So if, if, if the golems can't break them and you can't break them, the stairs are just there. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, it's a really interesting question. So Jeremy's response to this was something along the lines of, I don't think we're planning on having stairs be destroyable. I think it would require a very heavy tech investment to deal with the mechanics behind what would, uh, behind what that would mean. This isn't something he's heard of as feedback before. So this is the first time Jeremy heard of this question. Like this isn't something that he's even thought of, I guess. And um, though they've made multiple stories work within the castles, it's not technically a three-dimensional game. And he said here, 3D areas only work in designated castle areas. When you walk over a staircase, it just lifts you up. Even if the collision was off, it would still launch you into the air. It would be really weird and unintuitive to make them breakable. It would be confusing and immersion breaking for players. He also said that he would have to bring it up with the team to figure out a solution to this uh, issue. And he also mentioned that stairs triggering a castle siege might not be off the table, but he doesn't know exactly how it would work. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I really liked that question because that's something that like, you know, as a PVE player, I didn't really ever think of, you know? And so just hearing like breakable stairs, I was like, huh? And then when they explained the strat, I was like, oh my God, that's fucking genius. <laughs> All right. So the next question that they asked Jeremy was, are you looking at rebalancing golems, introducing new things to breach castles, you know, stuff like that? And his response was, I haven't heard of anything. So that that was kind of, I felt that was pretty somewhat definitive considering, um, you know, if anyone would have heard about something, it probably would be him. Uh, then again, he's not doing like the technical stuff. He's just, you know, the community manager, but I thought it was interesting that he hasn't heard of anything for that. Um, Cause I was kind of wondering that too. 
The next question they asked him was, is there anything being done about siege teaming? And uh, he said, no, players tend to quit after their castle gets wiped. So if anything changes, uh, it'd be something more defense focused to help with player retention. So he also said, something along the lines of uh, a failed siege attempt is way less painful than a loss of uh, than losing a castle to a siege and that people will always bring more people to try and overwhelm the, the opponents and that this isn't something they think they can solve without changing it away from the survival genre um he was looking to bring people out of and he also mentioned that the team was looking to bring people out of the castle more with the end game zone. So it sounds to me like they're trying to pull the focus away from castle sieging mechanics and, and focusing on the castle siege and actually give people an incentive to go fight out in the open world, which I thought was really uh, interesting and noteworthy. Um, so what that tells me is that this new, um, this new area is going to have a lot of really, uh, important uh resources for end game so we'll have to see exactly what that amounts to but i thought his interest his answer was really interesting here the next question they asked was what's the reward for going to the end game zone and jeremy responded with i can't answer that but plan to have a dev blog that goes into much more detail in the future he basically also said which i thought was really peculiar he also mentioned that it's not the next dev blog that this would go into but the one after and he said the next one might be coming a lot sooner than you think. And he said it in like a teasing way. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It wouldn't surprise me if we see a dev update sometime within the next couple of weeks based on Jeremy's answer here. So uh, I guess we got to keep our eyes peeled, guys. <laughs> the next question they asked was, do you plan to change fishing at all? And Jeremy's response was, there's going to be a change to fishing, but probably not in the way you're thinking. And honestly, like that was such a weird answer. Like I... <laughs> Because <laughs> the thing is, it's like, what do you think we're thinking? Like, it makes me wonder, like, is there, are they doing something that's totally not, um, like, not a normal thing to do? Like, I don't know. Something about that answer was, like, so weird to me. Um, but it makes me wonder even more, like, what, what does he mean by that? Like, I hope that if it, if it is, I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say that maybe the change is going to be something that's like super like minor that might be like a quality of life thing. So maybe they're not changing. It sounds like they're not going to overhaul fishing based on that answer. But I really I mean, how how would I know? I'm not Jeremy. I'm not the team. So uh, that's going to be something we'll have to figure out on our own, I guess, when 1.0 drops. The next question they asked was you mentioned something about tiers of weapons, artifacts, legendaries, etc. You know, and they and they basically said uh, they basically asked him, are artifacts artifacts unique on a server and his response was i don't believe artifacts will be unique they are a new tier of legendary uh he was explaining basically in his answer he said something along the lines of you know there's blue tier there's legendary tier and then there's gonna be artifact tier so it sounds like you know we're gonna go from blue stuff to orange stuff to artifact um, so for those of you only really familiar with like the colors of like the weapons and stuff like that, I think that's what he's referring to here. Um, he also said, we're going to be taking steps to make the blue tier more useful and we're taking steps to make those relevant. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, like I said, guys, I, I'm just kind of paraphrasing here on his responses and stuff, but I took notes on everything he said. So this is this is what I heard. So I, I thought that was really interesting. I wonder how they're going to balance it out, because right now the blue tier is kind of useless. Like you almost like never build it because by the time you get your blue tier, you're almost already working on orange tier stuff, like legendary tier stuff. Uh, so a lot of people tend to skip the blue tier and go straight to legendary. So I'm really curious to see what he means by that. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if that comes in uh, sooner, like earlier, uh, sorry, maybe in part of like early game stuff. It wouldn't surprise me, but I guess we're going to have to keep our eyes peeled for that. The next question they asked him about was, can you carry multiple artifacts? And he basically said they're not unique to the server and pretty sure you can carry. And he was pretty sure that you can carry multiple of them. So I'm going to take that as a probably yes. <laughs> The next question they asked was, why don't harpies drop blood essence? And Jeremy said, I didn't even notice, might be a bug. It's weird that they don't. And I was just like blown away because 
like I was kind of blown away by that answer because I also didn't notice like I think I feel like someone maybe may have mentioned it to me at one point but like I completely forgot about it and I almost never go over to the harpy nest unless someone needs help clearing that boss so I'm just like what like that's such a funny question um I hope that gets fixed <laughs> but yeah it probably is a bug I would agree with Jeremy there the next question they asked was is a trident weapon being added to the game and he didn't answer the question he basically kind of dodged the question and was like oh you're like I, I don't remember exactly how he phrased it but he basically said something along the lines of you're gonna have to find out like when the game you know drops so uh when 1.0 drops or something like that uh so i was just like wow <laughs> i kind of wonder um because apparently someone was take I, I don't know who it is because they didn't the the interviewer didn't like specifically name the person but apparently there's like i don't know like a streamer or someone out there who uh basically is putting bets on a trident and if they don't get a trident they have to shave their head i don't know who that is but man uh <laughs> <laughs> that that answer does not instill confidence i will tell you <laughs> the next question they asked jeremy was would you consider having a lockbox style prison cell so that the prisoner you put in there can't be stolen and his response to this was it doesn't sound like a bad idea now what the interviewer was talking about specifically here is when you use so for those of you who don't know when you have the vampire lockbox uh let's say you get raided right the idea or the purpose of the lockbox is to be able to put belongings in there that cannot be taken like you're the like you're pretty much the only one who can like access that other than i think maybe clan members but i'm not too sure about that i haven't actually tried opening someone else's lockbox so <laughs> um but yeah I, so the idea to do that on a prisoner cell is actually really smart like i didn't even think of that but it would make sense because you know it takes a long time to like get certain bloods and stuff so imagine having to start all over because you lost your castle to a siege i can only imagine like what a pain in the ass that would be so um the fact that he he basically said it doesn't sound like a bad idea like i i, I agree with him on that <laughs> it, does, it really doesn't that's not a bad idea the next question they asked jeremy was as you change the shards as necklaces are you thinking about time gating them at all so the example the interviewer gave was, you know, let's say it's the first day of server wipe and shards would not be lootable, right? Uh, Jeremy's response to this was, we've talked about doing something like that, but I don't think we're planning to do that for 1.0 might be considered for after 1.0. So I thought that was kind of interesting. The next question they asked Jeremy was, there's a lot of jank in the game currently with spell interactions and not working, you know, things not working as intended, any plans to fix. And he basically said, yes, we're no longer running with the limitation of being a version behind. Even if we do have some jank in 1.0, we will be much more capable of fixing it now that we have the engine situated. Or basically, he, he didn't phrase it like that, but he basically said now that we have the engine figured out for the game, uh, bug fixing is going to be a lot easier to do and fixing a lot of these like weird interactions with spells and abilities and stuff like that. So... Uh, that's definitely really reassuring to hear. <laughs> the next question they asked Jeremy was, have you personally played the newest version of the game? How's the performance? He said how the lighting looks better and runs better uh, overall. And one advantage of the PS5 port is that it gave them an excuse uh, to work on optimization. And the FPS was shockingly good when he was, you know, playing through it. And there were definitely performance improvements and that he's very excited for them. What I thought was really interesting about this response is that he like kind of hinted that he, he might be like, you know, basically getting really close to that NDA issue, you know, when he was answering that. So I'm just glad he kind of gave us that uh, information because I know I do have a lot of performance issues when I'm playing the game. So uh, I look forward to like a much smoother gaming experience, especially because I do a lot of castle decorating and stuff like that. So running through your castle and having the FPS drop and stuff like that is kind of annoying. So uh, I definitely look forward to seeing that. The next question they asked Jeremy was, will the RNG in the game be addressed? So for weapons and jewels and stuff like that, right? 
Karimi basically responded with something along the lines of, I can think of one example where we're making RNGs a little less frustrating. RNG is something that is part of the game. We're trying to address it without making it too easy to get what you want. Coming up with new ways to acquire things is one way we could address that. He, he basically, I remember when he, when he was asked this, he also kind of stressed something about how, like as part of the survival genre, like that's kind of like one of those things that you just kind of get like as a quirk where like other games you can like you know be absolutely sure about what your stats are going to be and stuff like that like this game is just not like that and that was just a design choice from what it sounds like so um i thought that was really interesting this wasn't really a question but the interviewer mentioned something and i thought this was interesting um they brought up a suggestion by the community that um maybe you could pick one stat on a jewel and then random chance for the others so I, I thought that was interesting. Um, so the next question that they asked Jeremy is, is the server side performance going to uh, gonna be addressed by the new variation of the engine and 1.0? He said, yes, that as well as the client. He mentioned that they're developed together and that he would assume so. So I thought it was interesting. Uh, the next thing they asked him was, are you guys going to support modding a bit more or make it easier? We lost a lot of modders when we got Gloomrot because all their work was basically lost and it created frustration. And Jeremy's response to this was probably like, I, I would say one of the biggest bombshells of this whole interview, honestly. Uh, I was not expecting uh, this answer, but it definitely made me kind of curious uh, as someone who uh, doesn't really mess around with mods too much, but can appreciate the work of modders, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, Jeremy's response here was, I'm hoping to give, uh, at least give earlier access to the server side client to modders when we go into beta. A few specific modders we've worked with in the past that we can trust to act ethically. And hopefully the head start they get and agreement to share their work with, uh, to share their work will give a jump start to modders. After that, we probably won't have the same sort of engine changes. So hopefully their work will be a lot more stable now. It is my desire to make things as easy as we can. The game wasn't built with consideration for modding. We were working with an experimental engine and there was a lot of stuff we were doing for the first time, so it didn't make the priority list. I think if we ever do anything else in the future, we will probably be thinking about that going in. For now, this is the best we can do. Uh, so that was kind of a, an interesting answer, I think, from Jeremy in the sense that it kind of clarifies a little bit like the whole um the, the consideration for modders when it comes to this game so I, I thought that was a really uh very uh substantive answer to be honest with you guys <laughs> after this part of the interview there was uh basically the finalists who were kind of duking it out in the tournament so the uh the shoutcasters kind of focused on that they were doing their whole thing right and then at the end, they were doing Q&A from the chat uh, with Jeremy. So uh, one question that came from the chat was, are you going to be making a void? Uh, are you going to make be making void push instead of pull like it used to? Now, void is actually a spell that like it used to like push you away, but now it pulls you. His response was no. Chaos's identity is more in line with pulling in and doing damage. Maybe there could be a jewel that makes it push instead. Not sure I will have to ask about that. So that was his response to that. The next question they asked him was, are you going, sorry, are you looking at making primary servants that are stronger than the rest? And he said, no, not right now. There's a lot of advanced things we want to add to servants. Servants are something we want to add to that isn't getting a lot of stuff in 1.0. Maybe that will come in 1.1. There are things we wanted to do with servants that didn't quite make it in time. So that's a really, I'm going to be honest, guys, that's a really disappointing answer. <laughs> um, like, I didn't actually think about, you know, making one servant like the head servant. I mean, that makes sense, right? I thought it was really kind of unfortunate about this answer is it sounds like when 1.0 comes out, we're not going to see much changes to servants. And that's kind of a downer. Like, I know a lot of people were like asking about the servants and they've been like super quiet about what their plans are for that. 
uh in fact like i i kind of feel like servants need an overhaul to be honest with you guys like it, it, there's a lot of like little things about it that i think should be easier to do through either the castle heart or the castle throne that just isn't a thing right now um so we'll have to see what he means by that so i guess we're gonna have to be a little bit patient on that i wonder if like 1.1 1 .1 or you know 1.2 or whatever numbers that go after that are probably gonna have some kind of major servant updates i really hope so guys because they need a rework seriously the next question they asked him was are pets and familiars something that is going gonna be coming to the game uh jeremy in response said that's actually something early on we thought about adding but no plans for that right now and then he also mentioned something now this was like a side note you know to this that he also mentioned something about old concept art where there was a crow as a familiar and i was like huh that's kind of interesting <laughs> yeah but he, he basically said like it would fit into like you know being a vampire and the whole like you know just the immersion of the game like he, he he emphasized that but he didn't really um he basically confirmed that there's no plans for that right now so uh, I guess we're a little uh, we're gonna have to wait for our for our familiars I guess if that ever ends up coming to the game the next question they asked Jeremy was is there a way to check and see what plots are taken without having to explore the server and his response was he wasn't sure what all has made it in he basically said that it was something they talked about but he's not sure if there's anything regarding that so I was like oh man like that <laughs> it kind of sucks um the next question was about the blood key they said hey uh the blood key is kind of useless what gives okay the, the interviewer didn't ask like that but he might as well have <laughs> and jeremy's response about the blood key was blood key uh does have a purpose but it's called a key and keys are typically to doors now this kind of got me theory crafting when i heard this because uh, one of the first things that went through my mind when I when I heard that was the two uh, lower parts of the map where there's the um, the graveyards like on the left and right side of the map because there's a door somewhere around there and I wonder if that's what we're going to use the blood key to unlock because it looks like those could literally be dungeons or something underneath there I have no idea and I kind of wonder if that's going to end up being like something in the game that the blood key uh, ends up unlocking uh, another theory I've seen tossed around is maybe the key could be to like Dracula's castle or something like that which I mean I guess would make probably make more sense um but yeah i thought that was interesting uh for the question and answer there the next question they asked was are you planning on reworking potions and then the example for why they're asking this was that when you're like pvping someone and they run around the corner you lose vision of them they pop aegis and then they start chugging potions uh if you can't break that shield they get the guaranteed heal because you can't break the animation because they're not taking damage to their actual health bar and uh jeremy's response to that was no the next question they asked was we went from nine slots to eight are you considering adding utility slots and jeremy said i don't think we are considering changing that but we're taking feedback the next question the chat asked was for the weaker ultimates is a lower cooldown or multiple uses that charge up something that's been considered many ults have always felt redundant jeremy responded with i'm not sure there might be a reason why they're all standardized the next question that the chat asked jeremy was are you planning on going to nintendo switch <laughs> i'm gonna be honest guys when i when i saw that question i started chuckling because i'm just like i can't imagine the game on switch like i don't own a switch so like maybe that's just my like my pc brain going off or something but i i just i was like what like <laughs> um jeremy kind of laughed when that question was asked so i feel like i'm not the only one who thought that was weird but his response to that question though was that the ps5 port is their first push as a studio into consoles at all essentially and i guess the studio is about 13 years old so for them to like be finally uh going out into consoles for the first time was kind of a big deal for them and he also mentioned something about how they're just focused on that right now so i'm gonna take that as a solid no as of now but maybe in the very very far out future that i cannot see right now <laughs> kind of answer <laughs> 
Uh, the next question they asked Jeremy in, from the chat was, is there a possibility of having a button that taps to another eight? Now, this was a really good question. Um, this was actually not from the original interviewer. This was actually from another person who was also there uh, in the call for the interview. And they were asking this and they gave an example of like how in FF14, uh, if you press like a button, you have like a whole new row of hot bars. Like you just press a button and you switch hot bars essentially. And I, I was like, oh man, that's such a good question. Well, Jeremy's response to this was, it's unlikely we'll change that at this point. That could work in MMOs and stuff, but I don't think I've played a single survival game that has done that. So I, I thought that was uh, kind of interesting because now I think about it, I don't think I have either. The next question they asked Jeremy is, is anything being considered to get to your castle faster to counter sieges as soon as possible? Right now we just use unstuck and his solid answer to that question was no. He also, uh, kind of went off on a side note and he mentioned how unstuck was kind of a necessary evil of the game where like on one hand uh, it can cause some exploitation issues but on the other hand it definitely is kind of better there than not there and I'm gonna have to saw side with him on that I definitely agree because there's been uh, I think there's only been like maybe one time I had to use unstuck um but I mean that that's kind of crazy the next question they asked Jeremy was, is there going to be a change to Merciless server uh, in order to make them more popular? So for those of you who don't know what Merciless is, Merciless is basically like a server type or like a server um, setup where like everything is extremely punishing. Um, basically, if you're a masochist, you go onto these servers. <laughs> At least that's my opinion anyway. Um, but hell what do i know i'm just a pve pleb right so they asked so they asked about this and jeremy's response was probably not most people who like merciless servers like how punishing they are that's kind of the point like he didn't say that's kind of the point but he might as well have and that was kind of what he was implying in his answer um the next question they asked was can you confirm what the new weapons are can you confirm if they get more and can you confirm if we get more horses as new mounts jeremy's response to this was i don't think we're gonna get any non-horse mounts the one that we're gonna get is still a horse or something like that and i was just like wait what like I <laughs> like that was that answer was like one of those like double take answers where I'm just kind of like, huh? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, so I think they're cooking up something. Um, it looks like we're probably going to get a new horse or something. I don't know exactly what he means by that. I don't know why. Like, I know this is like kind of unrelated to this, but something that kind of went through my mind when he said that was the first thing I thought of was Kelpies. Like, I don't know why. Like, I was just like, oh, my God, are we getting Kelpies? Like. <laughs> But that's just my um, that's just my smooth brain going off on its own. So just ignore that, I guess. <laughs> but but what I found really interesting about that is that he dodged the question again about the new weapons. So uh, even though they didn't ask about any specific weapons, he dodged that question. So I assume he can't talk about that yet. Um, so we're going to have to see, because I remember uh, last time for Gloomrot, when they told us about the great sword and the pistols, that was something that was revealed really close to the launch of Gloomrot. So I'm not expecting that in the next update, but maybe the update after that, I can see maybe them mentioning something about new weapons. But um, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Uh, there was kind of some open talking uh, that happened afterward where Jeremy just had like his own uh, moment to say whatever he wanted to say before he uh, the interview closed up. And he basically said something about how he was hoping to have the next dev blog out a lot sooner than the time between the previous two and he was hoping to tackle spells progression and stuff like that but the topic might change if something more interesting comes up so i thought that was a really cool um little thing to add at the end from jeremy so really quick before i go i also want to mention um i, I, wa I wanted to say some thank yous real quick i want to give a quick shout out again to grim xv for pointing this out on his youtube channel uh, that the interview even existed because i had no idea as someone who's like not part of the pvp aspect of the game 
for our community. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I also am going to put a link in the description to the VOD for the tournament. This is the V Arena EU Battle Rising tournament. So if you guys want to uh, check that out, thank you, thank you Grim XV for pointing that out and kind of letting us know or letting me know about the existence of this interview. Uh, I also want to thank V Arena for hosting that EU Battle Rising tournament and conducting the interview. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not too familiar with all the people who are part of that, so I can't really um, shout out anyone in particular, but I will leave a link in the description, like I said, to that uh, Twitch channel, and I'll also leave a link to Grim XV's uh, YouTube channel as well, because I'm going to cite them as sources. But yeah, if you want to listen to that interview yourself, feel free to go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for um, watching to the end of the video. And I, I kind of want to know, like, what do you guys think? Do you think that uh, some of the information we got from this interview is like kind of interesting or new? Uh, was there anything that kind of surprised you uh, with Jeremy's answers? Um, I, I mean, I know I had a couple of like double takes, like mental double takes, like uh, to some of the answers. Um, you know, what what were you excited about uh, after hearing about the stuff in this interview? And uh, what kind of what parts of the interview maybe disappointed you a little bit? I know for me, the disappointment was around the servants and also uh, the fact that horse breeding is not going to be a thing. But I, I will say that there were a lot of really cool, uh, interesting nuggets of uh knowledge in here that was uh very enlightening and I, I definitely think that was a great uh a great thing and i also i guess i can thank jeremy as well i didn't interview him myself but i i think that uh the way he answered these questions were pretty thorough for the most part um and very informative and i know he's like trying his best not to like reveal too much but uh, i i really like that he came out to uh support the pvp peeps out there in v arena because um, you know, the PvP aspect of the game is also kind of, uh, you know, really active and I would say even very important uh, in some ways, even though I personally don't participate. So it's good to see, um, you know, the people who are, you know, part of the V Rising crew uh, kind of come out for events like that and tournaments and things like that. Um, it's very uh, good to see. But yeah, again, thank you so much um, for watching this video. Uh, one last thing. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Sholo Q. I am a Sholo Eats Queenly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. Um, and basically I mostly stream V Rising content. Um, I also play games like Palia. I have been playing a lot of Bandle Tale recently. Uh, I do have some Planet Zoo content. I have some, uh, you know, content in general that's like from other survival games like uh, Pal World. I have a silent series on Pal World going on right now. So yeah, if you guys uh, liked what you saw today, feel free to le leave a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, shallow out.